Hey guys, Jason Scudelari with All Chevy Performance and behind me is our 71 Camaro. Currently it's got a 4L65 transmission and that's an automatic. To me it's pretty boring. Today we're going to throw in Bowler's TKX 5-speed transmission. One of the benefits is the size of it. No modifications done to the tunnel. Another thing I really like are three locations for your shifter. Today I'm going to show you how to do that conversion. Let's get started. So as you can see, Bowler was a one-stop shop. Got everything we needed for this installation from a bell housing clutch, throw-up bearing, slave cylinder, pedals, cross member, obviously that nice transmission, shifter, everything we need for today's installation. I gotta get that old transmission out, so let's go. So I've already started the uh, disassembly. Got the cooler lines out, torque converter bolts out, shift linkage, um, and I pulled the exhaust from the headers back out. So I'm gonna get the drive shaft going and uh, get the cross member out so I can lower the transmission and start unbolting it. We're gonna go ahead and secure the back of the transmission so we can get that cross member out of there. One thing you want to be careful of, watch the back of the engine, especially the head that faces further to the rear that you don't crash into your firewall. Obviously, the lower I can go, the easier it's going to be to get to those top bolts. I'm going to start taking this wiring out because these 4L60 trans run off of a computer, which we won't be using anymore with the manual trans. We'll hook up safety neutral and uh, the reverse lockout and that's about it. I don't know how much of this wiring is engine management wiring and how much is transmission so I just want to be careful and get all these tie wraps out so I don't yank anything off I shouldn't. Alright, time to up. So what we got in front of this Automatic Trans is a LS3 376, 520 horsepower, and a 530 torque. The transmission thrown in there is good for 600 on the torque side, so plenty of uh, strength to handle our LS3. Okay. All right, we're gonna start lowering it down a little. Get it back a little. Awesome. One trans out. Look at that difference. Of course, the bell housing's not on this one, but the bodies are pretty close in size. That's why it's gonna be awesome to put in. Um, no cutting or fabricating to the tunnel is gonna make it so much nicer. I have a block up there in between the head and uh, the firewall just to keep it from scratching or doing any damage. Let me get the transmission dipstick off the firewall real quick. Won't be needing that. There we go. So what we're going to do now is put the pilot bearing in there. I've already checked it on the output shaft of the transmission, which I knew would be right because it came from Bowler. And I just checked it up here against the crank. Everything looks good. I'm going to go get a seal driver so we can pop that in there. Let's go ahead and install the flywheel. There we go. And we use nothing but the best. We use ARP bolts. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and install our RAM power grip clutch. This is pretty critical. You wanna make sure everything stays aligned. This is just a single disc. It's good up to 550 horsepower. So we should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and put our pressure plate on. The dowels are in the flywheel. We want to line those up. There's one. There's two. Alright. Our tool slides in and out real easy. Alright, we'll go ahead and put our aluminum bell housing on. Make sure you don't pinch any wires or lines. There we go. Everything looks clear from here. 
I'll start my bolts. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and throw our hydraulic bearing in there. First thing we need to do is put our stop in. That way the bearing does not spin. A little bit of Loctite on there. Okay, now we can slide our bearing over there. I already put a little bit of lube on there for the O-ring. That slides on there really nice. Just be sure you uh, know which one is your bleeder valve when you get in there. This will be our pressure side. This will where we'll bleed the system out. Now that that's all in there, we're gonna have to take some measurements on the engine side for the clutch and on this side to uh, adjust this properly. You want about 150 thousandths. As the clutch wears, the fingers are gonna come out and if that's too tight, your clutch will start slipping. So first thing we're gonna do is go over to the transmission real quick. Put our straight edge across there. We'll go ahead and measure to the tip of the fingers just like so. There we got three inches, 174 thousandths. We're gonna subtract that, and then we're also gonna subtract the 150 thousandths, and we'll go over there. Now what we wanna do here, straight edge across the bearing, and we're gonna to measure to the surface of the base of the trans right here. So right now we got about 190 thousandths. So what we're gonna do is adjust the bearing in by screwing this in. It's not gonna take much to get where we need to be. Go ahead and measure again. Hundred and fifty-two thousandths. We're good, we're set up right there. So I put a center line where our automatic shifter was because I'd like to come out in that same area so our center console still works. So I think being able to position the shifter in different places on this transmission, I think we'll be able to achieve that goal. But let's get the car up, let's get the transmission in and see where we land. I don't know what my luck's gonna be with this shifter already installed. It may be, this may be too high to get the transmission in. I don't know yet, so let's just try it out. So this transmission is coming back out, just so you know. I gotta mark a hole for the shifter and hopefully the shifter's in the right spot now and I'm lucky. Well, this is just where it's gonna be because that's the furthest back it's gonna go. So once I get it in there, I'll mark it. Got the transmission bolted in with a couple bolts and I'm gonna figure out exactly where our center hole is. So make sure you're in neutral. There it is, right there. I'll line those up once I get the trans back out. And that will be where our hole goes. There you go. We're gonna drop the car. We'll drill our hole out. It actually looks nice and centered in the tunnel. Got about three and a half inches here. And then our low car bezel is a total of four on the openings. We'd be fine opening it up to four inches. Let me see what I have for hole saws. I like to go three and three quarter. Okay, I just promise you I did not mean to fold that one out. That's the three and three quarter we're gonna use. Let me go get the uh, mandrel. Here we go. We'll get the trans mount on and then the cross member in. We got these little ends here, they got slots in them so they slide back and forth. And then I'll show you the main cross member once we get these in. Should slide in if everything goes right, like that. Oh yeah. Let's go ahead and lower the trend jack out. Alrighty, transmission's in. All right, with the trans and everything installed onto the pedals. So I'm gonna get that going. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but we're getting there. All right, so last time we ended, uh, I was getting ready to install the pedals and got those installed. That was pretty easy. And I got further along in the instructions and realized we needed a pedal stop for the clutch. And well, I've never needed one or installed one and we don't have one. So luckily I ran over to CPP 
got together with the engineer over there, Danny, and uh, we came up with some ideas. And here's six different ideas here. These three are the same, these three are the same, they're just different lengths. And we printed them all out of plastic because we want to make sure they work before we actually make something out of aluminum. Well, none of these work because this area covers up a lot of the firewall hole area. So these were all too big. So what we ended up with was this little piece here that's adjustable and it works perfect for a pedal stop and it's gonna do everything we need to do. There are other options out there you can do. You can bring something off the floor that the pack of the pedal hits. In my opinion, that's not very clean and I definitely didn't wanna do this. This is up and under the dash, it's hidden. So I'm actually waiting right now for CPP to finish uh, machining this piece, which should be done in the next 30 minutes, and we'll actually install the real thing and get moving on. Let's go ahead and put the hydroscope and brakes back together. Um, I did not disconnect any of the lines. I was able to get things out of the way, so I'm not gonna have to re-bleed anything, which is nice. Um, let's mount that reservoir. All right. All right, so we went over to our friends at Inland Empire Drive Shaft. They made us a nice aluminum drive shaft. I uh, actually measured everything with the automatic trans and then measured what we put in and hopefully I did the math right. But uh, Bowler does supply the input shaft. Outside of that, Inland Empire did the rest. Let's go ahead and install our starter. So you can bleed these two of two different ways and some clutches work one way, some clutches work the other way, some clutches work both ways. What I'm gonna try this time, fill up the reservoir, then fill up a little plastic bottle and submerge the bleeder line in it and just let Taylor pump the brakes and hopefully we get all the air out. If that doesn't work, then we'll just do it the conventional way, pump the clutch a few times, open up the bleeder valve and continue until all the air's out. All right, so we're just finishing up the installation of our Classic Industries center console uh, products. And we've also got a low car shift boot in here. And uh, this uh, shifter comes with the bowler kit. We're gonna screw our shift knob on there. That's sort of the cherry on top. We're good to go. Looks like we're ready for a test drive. All right, so Jason's back at the shop. He asked me to take this out and rowing through the gears of this five-speed transmission from Bowler, we got their whole kit, their clutch, their hydraulic unit, shifter, the whole nine yards. It's really nice. It's really gonna wake this car up. It's a lot more fun to drive. I prefer manual transmissions over automatics unless I'm sitting in traffic, of course. But uh, this car is gonna be a lot of fun on the autocross course. It's gonna be a lot of fun carving the canyons, taking it through the windy roads, things like that. It also adds an overdrive to the car, so it'll be pretty nice to drive on the freeway, drop it into fifth, and uh, keep the RPMs down. So keep your eyes peeled to an upcoming issue of all Chevy Performance for the full installation story, and also take a look at allchevyperformance.com for this tech story and more. <laughs>